Welcome to another IB Environmental Systems and Societies video. This is the first part of our exploration of topic 4.2, water access, use, and security. In this first video, we're going to establish fundamental concepts that underpin water security, and we're going to examine what it means for communities to have reliable access to safe drinking water. We'll investigate data about global patterns of water access, and we'll consider how social, cultural, economic, and political factors create differences in water availability around the world. You'll learn how population growth and economic development drive increasing water demand, and that creates both challenges and opportunities for sustainable management. So let's get into it. Water security is a fundamental component of sustainability. When we talk about water security, we're referring to having reliable access to enough safe drinking water. This isn't just about having enough water. It's about having water that's clean, that's affordable, and that's consistently available. We need to consider both quantity, having enough water, and quality, ensuring that that water is safe to drink. Without reliable access to safe drinking water, communities struggle to meet basic needs and develop economically. These maps reveal some striking patterns in global water access. The first map shows safely managed drinking water distribution in 2022. Notice how high-income countries in North America and Europe generally have pretty high access rates, while parts of Africa show lower percentages of access. The second map that we're going to look at will show us mortality data related to unsafe water. When comparing these maps, you can identify regions where water security challenges directly impact human health. This map reveals the devastating consequences of water insecurity. The darker orange areas show regions with higher mortality rates from unsafe water resources. Notice how these areas largely align with regions showing lower access to safely managed water in the map that we just looked at. The relationship is clear. Inadequate water security leads to preventable deaths. Each year, hundreds of thousands of people die from diseases linked to contaminated water. All of this is preventable with proper water security measures. This Gapminder graph shows encouraging progress in global water access. In 1980, only 58% of people worldwide had access to clean drinking water within a 15-minute walk. But by 2022, that figure had reached 91%. That's remarkable progress in just 40 years. However, this global average masks some pretty important regional disparities. Almost 800 million people still lack basic water services, and billions more use water that isn't safely managed. The progress is real, but universal water security is still an unfinished goal. Social factors can impact water access and security. Look at this graphic of cubic meters per capita, that's cubic meters of water per person, and you can see tremendous variation between countries. The U.S. uses about 6,000 cubic meters per person every year, while in Ethiopia, that's less than 100 cubic meters per person per year. In China, Rapid urbanization is changing water access patterns with regional inequalities in the way it's distributed. In South Africa, historical apartheid created access disparities between black and white communities, and women were primarily responsible for water collection and township communities of black people lacked the infrastructure to access safe, clean drinking water. Cultural values and traditions shape how societies manage water resources. Brazil's relationship with water is influenced by the Amazon River's cultural significance. It's also influenced by the Catholic water blessing traditions in the country and the way that indigenous people have tried to protect water resources. In Morocco, Islamic traditions emphasize water sharing and communities maintain traditional water harvesting techniques alongside Hammam bathing traditions. These cultural factors influence the way that water is consumed it, they influence conservation practices, and they also influence management approaches. Different cultures can view water as a commodity, a sacred resource, or a basic right, and each perspective leads to different management approaches. Economic factors can dramatically impact water infrastructure and access. Australia has a very high GDP, and that enables Australia to have advanced water infrastructure development, including sophisticated water markets and drought response technologies like desalination plants. In contrast, India struggles with limited capital for infrastructure development, affordability concerns for impoverished populations, and competition between agricultural and urban water needs. Economic disparities create inequitable access situations. Wealthy regions can invest in water security, while economically disadvantaged areas often lack basic water infrastructure. Political decisions can have a profound impact on water management. 
Ethiopia faces water disputes that cross different boundaries along the Nile Basin, with hydroelectric dam development creating regional tensions with many countries in that corner of Africa. The U.S. implements comprehensive water management through federal water rights and environmental protection legislation. Water security is increasingly viewed as a strategic asset in international relations. Political instability can disrupt water services and stable governance tends to improve water security. The allocation of water rights, investment priorities for infrastructure, and water agreements that cross international borders are all fundamentally political decisions. As societies experience population growth or economic development, they face a critical choice. Increase water supply or improve the efficiency of its use. Growing populations need more water for drinking, sanitation, food production, and industry. Economic development typically increases the per capita water consumption as lifestyles change and industrial activity expands. This creates a sustainability challenge. How do you meet growing demand without depleting water resources? Many societies pursue both strategies simultaneously. They develop new water sources while implementing conservation strategies. This chart shows an important insight. Agriculture dominates global water consumption at 69%. After that, you have industry at 19% and domestic or home use accounting for just 12%. This distribution has major implications for the way that we manage our water resources. While household conservation is important, the biggest potential for water savings lies in agricultural efficiency. Industrial water use, which includes energy generation, also presents some pretty big conservation opportunities. As we consider sustainability, we have to also focus on all three sectors, but recognize that agriculture has an outsized impact compared to the others. This graph reveals a striking pattern. As countries develop economically, agriculture's share of water consumption decreases. In low-income countries, agriculture accounts for more than 90% of all the water that's withdrawn. In high-income countries, it drops to just 43%. This doesn't mean that high-income countries use less water overall. It's just that they often use more total water, but they allocate a larger percentage to industry and home uses. This shift happens as economies diversify beyond agriculture and they invest in more efficient irrigation technologies. This infographic illustrates the interconnected challenges of population growth and water demand. Global water demand for agriculture was projected to increase by 60% up through 2025, while the global population could grow another 22 to 32% by the middle of the 21st century. Most population growth occurs in regions already experiencing water stress. Africa's population could almost double and Asia's can increase by 18%. These projections create a sense of urgency for developing sustainable water management strategy. The convergence of population growth and climate change is going to intensify water security challenges in many regions of the world. That's it for the first part of ESS Topic 4.2, Water Access, Use, and Security. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And until next time, happy learning.